Dr. Sarita Lyons recently went on Lecrae's podcast where she talked about her new book, Church Girl. And in that interview, she talked about a lot of things from church hurt to purity to how modesty should be found within the body of Christ. And in this video, we're going to look at what does it actually mean to be modest within the church? What does it mean to actually be modest within the body of Christ and how that affects men and women relationships? My name is James. This is my wife, Brianna, and we are just two people who married at a later age in life. And we also, we've lived a lot of single life, and did a lot of dating. And so we come together and we just give our perspective on how you can just have a biblical relationship, a biblical marriage, but biblically date and do things God's way without having to compromise. Stay tuned as we give you scripture that supports our view on biblical modesty. I'm, I'm, my brain keeps constantly thinking of so many caricatures of, of women mm -hmm. and women out there who are like, hey, man, sis, I, I need this book. I need to get on post. Um, but then wait a minute. What about modesty? What about purity? What about, you know, yeah. gender roles? Mm -hmm. What do you have for women as they start hitting those bumps in the road? Yeah, well, you know. A lot of that, I'll do the best I can to answer on the, on, on the show, but the questions that you're bringing up really highlight how imperative it is that we have discipleship mm -hmm. in the church because some of the reasons why we itch when we hear some of that stuff, <laughs> it's like we have a reaction to it, is because we just have not had anyone to be patient with us, mm -hmm. to hear why we are hurting behind some of these triggering words, what's been our experience. Because see, for me, and maybe this is the counselor in me, before I'm, I attempt to teach and correct, you know, most counselors do spend more time listening, not advising. Yeah. That instantly um, made me think about, this is actually something that I, when I was in the classroom teaching, and it took me some time to really implement this, but I realized right away that as teachers, as educators, because I know she's talking about from the clinical side of it, right? She being a licensed um, in, the, in the realm of therapy, right? Yeah. But as we know, as a teacher, you wear many hats, and sometimes we become therapists in the classroom, yeah. you know, and so many other things. But I remember coming to a place of like, Brianna, sometimes it's, it's not that they need to hear you, it's that you need to hear them. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, we grew up where we didn't, some, I'm not going to say all of us, but, you know, we grew up in a culture, I know just black people in general, children aren't given a voice you you can't speak up when you do it's like um you may be told that you're stepping out of line or you know oh you don't talk to me like that and of course don't disrespect but we we it starts at a young age where we show children or show people that their voice is valuable yeah i value your opinion and it's 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 and it's so what she's saying is so smart because if we don't listen we'll never understand right We'll just keep being the dead horse. We'll keep just throwing out this knowledge or throwing out, well, this is what I did and this is how we did it. But when we take the time to listen to the heart, which is something Jesus was also really good at, mm -hmm. which is why he was able to maneuver like he did because he listened. Even the Bible said, I heard the cry. Right. We serve a God that listens. And then he's able, he disciplines, he rebukes, he counsels, but he first listens. Um, and if you want to talk about things like modesty and um, submission submission, and, and purity and discipleship, which, which she'll, she'll get into in just, just a bit, uh, you, 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 you got to first meet the people where they are. Mm -hmm. Don't stay there with them, meet them there. But then you can then by meeting them, them there, you can actually, you know, and I Bring like how higher. you said meeting the need because there are a lot of people who just need to be heard. It's like 
why why are you like against all this stuff? So of course we know we've had purity culture who went rogue and you know objectified women or just had unreasonable issues and standards for women to uphold that oftentimes were very graceless because sometimes we can have right doctrine mm -hmm. like because I'm not going to sit up here and say that there is not a call to modesty mm -hmm. like like we can be Christian and just dress any old kind of way but modesty is bigger than dress mm -hmm. I think we have to talk more about modesty in speech because some of us are very immodest in the way we talk. Mm. We have to talk about modesty and not just coverage of clothing, but what do you wear on your clothing? Like, I mean, like, do you got a shirt on with a middle finger up? Like, so that's a form of immodesty, in my opinion. Do you have an immodest thought life? Mm. Do you, you know, do you have an immodest way of carrying yourself? I think it's immodest to come into a room and take it over and not let anybody talk, yeah. you know, but I'm, so I'm saying, so some of these things have just been boiled down to modesty of dress yeah. and women have been beat over the head and have had to do the heavy lifting of changing the self, being responsible for the purity of men men um and 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 i think those are the reasons why women are often like Trinity. running away from that but i do think we need older women in the faith we need wiser women in the faith to say no baby god loves you yes you're beautiful but god didn't call you to just have it all hanging out talk about purity culture and how what because she's because she's making a good point of how, especially in, in the latter part of how it's up to the older generations to kind of help with calling out, not just necessarily calling out, but just guiding and leading mm -hmm. and um, walking by with example to the younger generation. Cause a lot of times we'll just like, because we saw it happen to us when, I mean, we, I mean the millennial gen generation, because we saw like Gen X and the baby boomer gen generation do it to us as far as like, um, look at the things that we were into and just shunned it. Um, whether that be like hip hop or like dress or like, um, you know, the, the, the different styles of like clothing and things like that. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the boomer generation, you know, they just looked at it and just shunned it. But then we're doing that now with, uh, Gen Z and, and the generation after, after that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like, well, when is it appropriate for then us the the older generation to go back and, and teach the, the the younger generation without it being a like mm -hmm. a, a, a mockery of what they're doing or just um making it seem like we don't even hear them I, I, we're just trying to just teach and talk down at them versus talking to them and encouraging them yeah it is the issue was talking i instantly thought about jesus and when the Pharisees and Sadducees were coming for the disciples because they did not wash their hands before they ate and how Jesus went into, um, you're not clean. It's not what goes into you is what comes out. And I think that what she was, what she's coming at, which is what's true is at the end of the day, it goes back to your heart. And we're going to talk about this. I know soon, with a whole nother video, but it always goes back to the heart because like, as she's saying, yes, we've zeroed in on the modesty when it comes to how we dress, but any type of immodesty or, or you behaving in a way that is not at the end of the day, we're here to please God. So if God is not pleased or if we're, you know, being arrogant, I feel like it, a lot of it is kind of arrogance and pridefulness. Like at the end of the day, because I'm a woman, I can speak on. It. It's like I've had this talk with women where it's kind of like you know, well, I'll say, but you got to think about your brother and your sisters. You don't want to cause anybody to fall. And then they're like, well, that's their problem. No, as a Christian, that's our is we don't. It's not just gonna be my brother's problem. It's gonna it's my problem too. Like we're we're one body. Yeah, many parts, but we're one body. So if one part is suffering or hurting or being led astray or being tempted, we all are. So it's not it's not just on them. But at the same time, I think what she's saying is it goes back to how our, how our heart is because it could be in our minds. You may be, shoot, clothed from head to toe, as we know some religions are, but your mind, your mouth, what's coming out? Yeah. How are you thinking? How do you treat people? 
you know, is always deeper. And Jesus always showed that as he was honestly trying to give the Pharisees and Sadducees a, a chance to see that, hey, y'all got the outward. Y'all banging with it. Y'all memorize the word. Um, but y'all can't see the word right in front of you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you know, praying in the synagogues, y'all doing all this stuff, but your heart is far from me. Yep. And and, and this plays a key part in dating and relationships as a Christian in marriage, because you can't you can't base your attraction to a person based off the physical alone. Mm-hmm. Even if you're even if you do have you know, a standard and you're not like, let's say um, you're a Christian guy and you're looking for, um, you know, a woman of God, but then like, you know, what you're looking for is, oh, well, well, she, she's not dressed like this. And and, and there are, there is, I, I should say that there is, there, there should be some type of uh, guide that you should be looking for there's when, a standard. you know, there uh, there's a standard when, uh, when you're, when you're looking for a wife, you know, you should, you, sh- you shouldn't want a, a woman that, you know, basically looks like she's dressing a part uh, of a harlot, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, don't just make everything about her appearance. Yeah. You know, what is she actually about? What, what is her, what is her walk like? You know, that's, that, that's what taking the time to actually have that daily walk with, with her, you know, um, what is she like around her friends? What is she like, you know, around other believers? What is she, is she like around people that, that she don't necessarily like? What is she, she, what is she like in certain seasons? And the same thing for the, uh, for the, for the women, like, what is he like, um, in certain seasons, you know, is he only, um, speaking on godly things when he's at church or like, you know, is it a lifestyle for him or is it just something that he does on Sundays? Um, like, how is he, uh, is he in the word? Is he, how, how is he with other people? Is he serving other people? Um, is he a servant leader? You know, yeah. you, you got some people that, that are pro- proclaiming themselves as leaders, but are they servant leaders? Um, and it's, it's, it's more joke. It's more so just looking at how they walk. And in, in other words, looking at the fruit that they bear, mm-hmm. um, what fruit are they bearing? Nobody. Cause then, cause then we can't just be out here being the, the, the fruit inspector and police either thinking that we can just, uh, call out, uh, what we think is, right fruit and wrong fruit, you know, and, and just think that, okay. Does but- fruit take time? <laughs> like, I think that that, like, I don't want to steer away from that. And I, you know, that's why I'm like, some women going to love me, some women not going to love me. You're going to love some of the stuff I say. Yeah. You're not going to love some of the stuff I say. And that's why at the end of the day, I'm beholding to no one other than Jesus Christ. So if I'm wrong, I want the Holy Spirit to jam me up. But, but, but I, but I'm saying that in love and, and with all due respect and love, that the way we fix purity culture is to not call, you know, um, inappropriate dress body positivity. Mm. Like God wants you to love yourself. God wants you to care for your body. And God doesn't necessarily want you to um, be a slave to everybody's opinion of you. Yeah. But he does want you to care about what he thinks. So what if we stripped away all the thoughts and people and talk talking points and if we just went straight into scripture and it's like what does holiness look like to god yeah right and holiness is not an antiquated word Mm. like that's what sanctification is he is making us less like ourselves and more like him so that we can show off and, and and exude the fragrant aroma of jesus christ so that when when i walk into a room that I don't have to just say, well, I am a Christian and I don't care about what you think about the way I talk, the way I look like that. We don't create a stumbling block yeah. for people. And to be honest, you know, I think we have a lot of liberty as Christians. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think we have far more liberty in Christ than we think. Like, God is a God that freed us. But I also think that we often lay down a lot of our liberty for the sake of weaker people in the faith and the world who is confused sometimes by our our presentation yeah. in a number of settings and we say that we represent God so in 1 Peter chapter 3 starting at verse 3 don't let your beauty consist of outward things like elaborate hairstyles and wearing gold jewelry or fine clothes but rather what is inside the heart the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. 
For in the past, the holy women who put their hope in God, who adorned themselves in this way, submitted to their own husbands, mm. just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You have become her children when you do what is good and do not fear any intimidation. That's that's what modesty really is. But what did it point back to? And the reason, too, that... Because I think it's another scripture that talks about this, but the reason why they were, like, not focusing so much on hairstyles and gold jewelry and clothes and all this is because, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Egyptians yep. that, you know, they took that far deep and wide, and then sometimes some of that stuff would also represent other gods. Yeah, they would they would have the beads on, like the belly rings and the necklace and, and the bangles, and that all represented, you know, the gods that they were serving, like, you know. Exactly. And which is why in this verse you see, he says, but rather what is inside the heart. That's what. So we're not yeah. just saying about this just to say it, like this is literal Bible. But I also like how another verse um, that talks about the clothing in Proverbs 31, verse 25, mm -hmm. she is clothed with strength, strength. and dignity. Mm -hmm. She lasts without fear of the future. And so we we know, okay. This is obviously figurative, right? Like, right. you can't literally put that on. But this goes back to the character of that woman. Right. Because at the end of the day, we know that God does not look at the outer appearance. He looks at the heart. Right. And so I think that, and this kind of reminds me of the sermon that we heard this past weekend where it's like, he brought up purity culture too, and it's like, we're so quick to say, don't do, don't do, and we're so quick to look at because it's so easy you know, if you see a woman, even within the church, right, and they're wearing a certain thing, and, you know, it'll be so easy to say, okay, don't wear that or take that off. But it will, I feel like it will be a bigger plug for the kingdom for you to actually get to know that woman, the heart of that woman, and and, and build a relationship, a friendship, a, you know, build with her. Yeah. You know, first know what her heart is. No, yeah, and 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 then prayerfully see how can I walk alongside of God in her life yeah. and help her to see that there's a better way for her to dress. You, you know, know what I see? I I see a lot of times you'll hear about um, a lot of the women in the church. You know, with purity culture and with modesty you know these modesty police where they'll uh, they'll basically attack the woman in the church for what she's wearing but then with the men i've seen now um and this is heavily influenced by this red pill um you know hyper masculine movement that's of the world that you see a lot of men that are in the church but but but, but they're not doing this in the church they're doing this outside the church where they'll talk about how a woman's dress and then they'll also be the modesty police um but they'll do it in a sense of like just domineering as if they're they're much better than uh, than her um and yeah the reason why christian brothers ain't dating you because because you because you dress like this and, da, da, da. and it's like okay there's there's a way to point it out without literally pointing the finger and pointing out yeah. if, if, if that makes demean. sense, you know, and, and without the I demean that person's character, there's a way to do it while at the same time edifying, mm. but I'm seeing a lot of brothers. Um, they're doing just like as the world does, because in the world you have men that are a part of this, uh, com a community that have just been hurt so bad by, by women that they, that they want and that they desire that are pretty much women that are, selling their bodies or just, you know, dress as if they are. Um, and because those men couldn't get those women, now they're pointing the finger at them saying that, oh, you know, basically calling them shameful women. But then but then that's influenced in the church. And now you got brothers doing the same thing, but saying saying that, that they're shameful in the name of Christ. It's, it's, it's almost as if, you know, they're the same men that were, that, that were in the crowd pointing at the woman that was caught in an in, in act of adultery. But what did Jesus do? He actually went to that woman and he said, "Woman, where are your accusers?" Mm -hmm. And so, neither do I accuse you. So, so, so one, he he wasn't there to accuse her, but two, at the same time, he did encourage her not to sin anymore. Mm -hmm. It was through his grace that did it. I was in prayer and I was thinking about 
her story, mm-hmm. you know, and as you say, you know, um, everything that went went on and them catching her and just um, oh my gosh, imagine the shame. She yeah. was obviously, but she had no. She talking about modesty. She had no clothes on. Right. Um, but you know, Jesus was writing in the sand while everyone was dropping their stones because no one was without sin but him. Right. Huh. Okay. But um, and he didn't pick up in the in prayer. I said, what if he was rewriting her story? Mm-hmm. They had, they wanted to end her story. Killing her, that would have been the end. But what if in that sand, he was rewriting writing her story? Mm. She's now a daughter. Mm. She will now be in the kingdom. She is now redeemed. The wow. blood I have not even shed yet saves her. He what what if, and and I bring that up to say, well, based off what you were saying, the issue is men and women, us not seeing one another through the right lens. We're not. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the the guy who was blind and, and 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 Jesus, you know, rubbed his eyes and and then he saw he saw people that looked like trees. Then he had to rub his eyes again and he saw everybody clearly. Mm-hmm. A lot of us are are we don't see human. We don't see what God sees yeah. in people, and that's the problem. Because if we saw what God saw what, exactly, we would see behind. We would see beyond what they have on. It's never too late. Okay, your biological clock is not ticking. It's not. God is the author of time. Not you. Not the doctors. Not nobody else. God is the author, God is the finisher, and God will do it. Go out there and, and make, make today, today meaningful. Peace. We said that like seven times.